Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As we promised, we are going to discuss the uh, results of the latest visit of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to China. The head of a state returned back home after a three-day visit to China as he was invited by his Chinese counterpart to participate in the opening ceremony of the Winter Games the very first Egyptian president to be invited for such an occasion by China. Well, strategic relationship with, um, uh, with China, summit talks which uh, took place between the two presidents, um, uh, discussing a number of issues, uh, boosting bilateral ties, uh, boosting strategic partnership, uh, boosting uh, the cooperation, particularly in the fields of industry, economy, investment, trade, uh, scientific research, technology, many things. To shed more light on this, we are very much delighted to have with us via phone Professor Dr. Yum Hamaki. And uh, Dr. Yum, of course, she is our um, economic expert and professor of economics. A very good morning to you, Dr. Yum. Good morning. Dr. Yom, let's start immediately with um, a statement which was said by Xi Jinping, the Chinese president. He said that the um, Egyptian-Chinese strategic uh, partnership is a model for China-Arab, China-African, China-developing uh, countries' relations. How do you see this description, ma'am? Actually, uh, this is uh, uh, real and uh, uh, this is a fact, uh, taking into consideration that uh, our relation uh, uh, with China uh, becoming strategic uh, since uh, China is one of the major uh, trading partners for Egypt from one perspective, from another, uh, China is having, uh, uh, you know, uh, opportunities and the actual investment uh, in Egypt, uh, which is increasing for the last period uh, seriously, uh, we can see in the uh, economic zone in the Suez Canal uh, uh, a lot of potentialities for uh, the expansion of uh, Chinese investment in Egypt. And what you mentioned regarding the um, uh, speech of uh, uh, President Xi Jinping regarding, you know, the potentialities of, uh, you know, enhancing such, uh, uh, you know, correlation is quite important. Why? Because uh, Egypt nowadays is participating uh, significantly in uh, uh, the road and belt, uh, which is a, a very um, ambitious and uh, large uh, uh, strategic investment uh, for China in developing countries. And when the, the Chinese president uh, mentioned Egypt as a liaison between uh, uh, China and developing countries uh, and between China and African countries, this means a lot which means that um, Egypt actually can play such a role. And we all know uh, when Egypt took the presidency of African Union, uh, Egypt exerted uh, efforts in order to put Africa uh, in cooperation with all uh, partners in Africa, uh, to put uh, Africa on the, uh, you know, uh, on that track regarding uh, how Africa should be integrated uh, uh, into the world economy, not only as a source of uh, raw materials, but to industrialize and to use the resources efficiently. And uh, from here it comes, uh, uh, you know, how to cope with the vision uh, 2063 uh, of uh, Africa and uh, participating uh, significantly in all activities and uh, African youth always uh, uh, are invited into uh, our uh, youth uh, you know, forum uh, uh, and participating in training and uh, besides uh, nowadays uh, intra-investment and intra-trade and uh, designing towards having a free trade area uh, in Africa, all these efforts actually can present Egypt uh, uh, as what uh, the Chinese uh, president uh, has mentioned in his uh, speech. Yes, uh, Dr. Yom, and um, to shed more light on some of the points which you've kindly mentioned, 
the two leaders discussed uh, ways to boost the presence of uh, uh, Chinese investors and Chinese um, manufacturers in the uh, Suez Canal economic zone in the same how to benefit from the initiative of the Belt and Road. They are complementary, they are not contradictory, and this is going to be a win-win situation, if I can yes. say so. Would you please elaborate? Yes, yes please. Yes. yes, this is quite important. Uh, what we can mention as win-win, because for the last period we have exercised uh, uh, how to, uh, you know, interact uh, investors. We have a lot of investors that are investing in China, and they are benefiting from uh, transfer of technology and uh, uh, the access, accessing international markets. So this is from one perspective. From another, the Chinese are coming. They can, by having investment in Egypt, they can address uh, the African uh, com uh, continent as well as uh, uh, Arab countries. So uh, by just uh, arranging um, on a mutual win-win uh, situation what are the investments that can be beneficial for both uh, uh, parts and I believe that uh, we have uh, started uh, significantly in the field of pharmaceuticals or on vaccines uh, and uh, besides uh, uh, petrochemicals and uh, uh, chemical production uh, and mining industries all this uh, uh, you know, uh, types of uh, industries and investment are uh, uh, quite for the mutual benefit with, between the two sides. And when uh, we mention uh, uh, the Belt and Road uh, strategic um, uh, project, I believe that uh, Egypt uh, uh, has, uh, uh, you know, paved the way uh, regarding being integrated in such a project by uh, taking care for the last period uh, to enhance uh, infrastructure. Uh, you can, we can all see to how extent Egypt has uh, done uh, quite well regarding infrastructure. And this is quite important for uh, attracting investment because, uh, you know, infrastructure uh, can reduce the cost of uh, investment. And this is quite important for China. Uh, as well as for Egypt. So all this uh, needs more efforts to be exerted by uh, businessmen and women, by uh, uh, the government, uh, by uh, industrial union in both sides, uh, in order to, you know, specify what uh, uh, projects can be beneficial for both sides, how to invest uh, the transfer of technology. Uh, and when we, uh, we put uh, nowadays... Uh, events taking part internationally and, the, you know, the tensions and challenges uh, confronting uh, nowadays uh, the world economy post-COVID and because of political, uh, you know, conflicts uh, taking part nowadays, we can see that uh, China uh, is quite uh, an important, uh, you know, uh, partner for Egypt from both sides. Yes, and we cannot separate politics from economy by all means. Economy is not going to flourish except when there is a stable place, a stable region. So stability is a key word behind the uh, development in any region, not only in the Middle East, but worldwide. Uh, Dr. Yes. Jung, also... Yes, some I agree of, with you. Uh, mm. Thank you. Uh, uh, also, um, I'd like just to focus on some of the statements which were said by both leaders and from that we can learn or we can know uh, the messages which are sent to the whole world after the summit. Uh, President Xi Jinping said that uh, China and Egypt share the same visions regarding many things. Uh, on top of the list is the well-being of both peoples. Here I'm going to yeah. turn back to the win-win situation. President yeah. Abdel Fattah Sisi was keen to uh, discuss and in detail the electric vehicles, for example, to turn Sharm el-Sheikh, which is going to host the COP27 summit later in the year uh, with electric vehicles. So Sharm el-Sheikh is going to turn green. 
and um, also the pharmaceutical industries, as you've kindly mentioned, to produce uh, Sinovac uh, or the Chinese vaccines here in Egypt. These are things which are practically implemented on the ground. I mean, here we are speaking about things which are tangible, which we can mm. touch ourselves as the people, the layman in the street. How do you see turning the talks from theory to practice or to uh, practical or to implement them on the ground um, in no time? Yes, of course. You know, uh, you, you have mentioned two topics. Uh, First of all, uh, it's uh, regarding, you know, uh, uh, China, uh, regarding combating poverty. China can be considered as one of the successful experience uh, towards achieving such goal. China succeeded uh, for the period from uh, 2005 to 2015 to alleviate the poverty for 750 million of population. And the experience actually has been based on uh, the empowerment of uh, poor people economically and uh, integrate poor people into uh, uh, exportation. And from here it comes upgrading their skills and uh, 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 offering opportunities of job for them. So uh, they, uh, they succeeded uh, to achieve uh, such a goal. Nowadays, Egypt is, uh, uh, you know, exerting effort in decent life initiatives uh, in order to uh, empower uh, poor people by offering opportunities and uh, by building capabilities. Uh, and this is, uh, we can benefit quite well from the Chinese uh, experience in this sense. The other part, with, uh, which is um, uh, climate change and addressing climate change, Egypt has done uh, successfully uh, a lot of uh, efforts uh, to achieve uh, such goal, uh, taking into consideration that uh, China has developed, uh, uh, you know, uh, solar energy and uh, has succeeded to reduce the cost of uh, solar energy uh, significantly uh, during the last part. Uh, besides that, uh, China has a lot of activities to address climate change, and uh, we can actually share investment and experiences uh, regarding uh, such matters. So when we prepare for, uh, like you mentioned, for COP27, I believe that having uh, China as an important partner uh, towards investment in green uh, economy and green activities regarding renewable energy, like you mentioned for electric car, uh, China is doing quite well regarding that. And uh, when we benefit and exchange experiences and uh, building chains of investment, uh, sharing investment between the two sides, I believe that Egypt can benefit a lot. And uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi said that we are building on what we have started already. And uh, there are mutual meetings between top senior officials from the two sides. It's not only the summit talks between the two presidents, but uh, from, um, uh, there are other meetings on the ministerial level, on the top businessman level, on the private sector level. Uh, how do you see the diversification of meetings and the meetings which are taking place even as we speak between Egyptian and the Chinese delegation, whether here in Cairo or in Beijing? This is quite important because, you know, if you keep and keep uh, talking without having any results in reality, this is not uh, actually uh, going to lead to any benefit for both uh, countries. But uh, when you have this institutional basis uh, towards the implementation of the, or if, if we have a memorandum of understanding or agreements, but uh, without having B2B business to business meeting and uh, uh, specifying the opportunities mutual, uh, of mutual benefit of investment as well as a ministerial meeting to talk about how to uh, address challenges and uh, address obstacles preventing from such investment to take part and to uh, develop. I believe this institutional basis is quite important for, uh, you know, uh, the success of such a meeting and such uh, agreements. 
And uh, by having this type of monitoring and evaluation all the time, and do you know that we have in our, uh, you know, uh, institutional basis in, um, as a prime minister, our prime minister is having a unit regarding monitoring the relation with China. So I believe this uh, should be a very important task uh, for such unit uh, to uh, actually monitoring what's going on and uh, to uh, transfer these agreements into results on reality. One final question, Dr. Yun, and here I don't know if we can consider it an uh, economic one or no, but as we said before, we cannot separate politics from economy. In every foreign trip for the president, he is keen to meet on the sidelines of the uh, the, the main event he is um, going to or uh, invited to attend, he is keen to have uh, other meetings with other uh, top guests also to exchange views, to, uh, to discuss ways to boost bilateral ties. And uh, yesterday, it was no exception in the banquet which was held by uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping to honor the uh, heads of states and heads of governments who were keen to come and to participate, to share in the opening ceremony of the Winter Games. He had a talks, President Sisi had talks with Imran Khan, Prime Minister of Pakistan, with Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, with... Um, um, uh, Amir of Qatar, Hamad bin Tamim Al Thani, with the Crown Prince of um, the United Arab Emirates, Muhammad, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, with, I mean, with a bundle of world leaders and with uh, top officials. How do you see this keenness to, to, to seize all opportunities to uh, exchange the, uh, to share the Egyptian views and to exchange experiences and to attract? more investments uh, into Egypt? Actually, this is a very g good opportunity um, in this gathering to, uh, you know, meet, uh, uh, you know, top uh, 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 presidents and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, this actually uh, gathering is quite important to invest it in mutual uh, discussing the challenges confronting, as I mentioned before, the post-COVID-19, uh, post, uh, as well as uh, the challenges existing everywhere. And you know that the Arab uh, uh, countries nowadays are uh, addressing severe challenges. Uh, so by uh, uh, talking and uh, exchanging ideas with Arab leaders, I believe this is quite important, as well as Jotrish, uh, uh, the United Nations, we have a very important, uh, you know, uh, in all our events, we are, uh, uh, you know, inviting him to come and to discuss, uh, you know, uh, all the international uh, 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 matters that uh, can affect Egypt. Uh, this uh, gathering and this uh, uh, exchanging ideas, I believe, can play a significant role to specify what Egypt should uh, do for the coming period, how to address challenges. So uh, it, it's going for the benefit of all uh, parties. Well, um, I, I really enjoyed my time. It's uh, all the time a pleasure to have you uh, with us, uh, Dr. Yum. You are always an added value to our programs. Dr. Yum Nahamaki, a professor of economics and our economic expert. Thank you very much, ma'am. Have a very good day. Right after the short break,